Obviously it is very uncertain and graduating in 2020 is it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult time to graduate, especially as an architect student. Okay, good morning ladies and gents. Welcome back to a brand new video. Who would have thought that would be so difficult to find a spot in a massive field to sit down and film? And now I'm just lying like in the middle of like some crops, <laughs> as you can see. Um, and people are definitely going to walk past like, what the hell is that guy doing? And I thought if I was going to sit down and do like a QA, and a I wanted to be in like a different scenery to kind of sitting in my kitchen or sitting in my bedroom. So I thought I'd come out on a lovely Sunday morning and sit down and kind of film with you guys. So I did a questions and answer thing on my Instagram, if that's what you call it, a questions box thing. And people, you guys obviously asked me plenty of questions. So we've got quite a few, but I'm going to answer probably about 15 um, so I thought I'd just sit down and kind of speak because obviously the fast paced vlogs I don't really get the chance to sit down and speak um, for a long period of time and I haven't been doing the podcast as much recently so I basically need to stop waffling and just get, get on with the video so question numero one how do I know if architecture is right for me does it just go beyond loving the aesthetics um, so I, I don't think I can really sit here and tell you what um, you need to do um, to find out whether architecture is right. I'm not really here to tell you if it's right or not. Um, I'm a big, big believer in trying things out and putting yourself out there um, to really test and try what you really love and what you're really passionate about. Because um, essentially you're not gonna find what you truly love if you don't try and kind of try and try and really um, put some time and effort in committing to things um, to really try and find what you love. Um, so what I would say is that if you if it's something that you want to do and you're not sure, I would just go for it. Just dive in um, and really kind of commit yourself. Give it 100%. And if it doesn't work out for you, then it doesn't work. Hello? <laughs> if it doesn't work out for you, then it doesn't work out. But the most important thing is that you know that you have tried and you've given your all. So I'm not really here to tell you how you know if architecture is the right thing for you because I think it's obviously... Um, an individual it's obviously all relative and you need to find out for yourself um, but i definitely just say that if you want to if you want to try it definitely go out there commit yourself obviously it's a long course it's long-winded um but i think it's just one of those things that you just got to put yourself out there and give it a go question number two what's happening with the vlogs when you get a job will you be uploading a lot less frequent this is a fantastic question and it's a very I find it a very difficult question to answer because I really well and truly don't have a clue what's going to happen if I'm honest. Um, I've obviously shared my experiences throughout university and I was able to share my experience in university and show my design process, the lifestyle side of things and I had the time um, and I was actually able to film those things but when I go into practice it's obviously a lot more of a professional environment. I can't obviously film in the office, I can't sit there and talk about things in the office because that's obviously very private information and I can't do that so I don't know it's going to be different um, I've obviously um, got a time frame from when I go to work and then after work and then at the weekends which I think is going to be kind of like the prime spot for me just to get some videos filmed um, but I really don't know what's going to happen if I'm honest I think it's going to be one of those things where it's going to be a challenge to kind of adapt to the different environment and the different type of content and I'm definitely looking forward to the challenge um, I think it'll be quite interesting to see what we can do with the channel and what we can do whilst we're working out for the year. Um, but yeah, just make sure you guys stick around. <laughs> Please don't leave me. Um, but yeah, I'm not, gonna, not sure what's going to happen. I think I'm going to probably aim for like one video a week. Um, but if I make videos that I'm not really enjoying making, I'm not just going to upload them for the sake of having a video up for that week. Um, I'm going to really try to make really good content for you guys and informative content. So we don't know what's going to happen. Question number three, is it hard to find a job with RIBA part one? Um, I can't really answer that question because I haven't got a job yet. Um, obviously, I'm in the process of applying and looking for jobs and getting a position as a part one architectural assistant. I think that's what it's called. Um, and yeah, obviously right now, graduating in the middle of a pandemic is obviously not ideal at all. This is probably one of the worst times to graduate, especially as an architecture student. Um, so it's difficult right now um, to find jobs. Um, I think the important thing is that you should be applying to jobs that are and aren't available at the moment. And if they're not being advertised, still put yourself out there and apply to companies, kind of send off your, your CV, etc. Even, even if they're not hiring, maybe get some feedback from them. 
So I wouldn't let um, it kind of dishearten you that people aren't really advertising jobs at the moment or um, anything like that. Just still put yourself out there and really try and um, find a job. But I can't really say right now whether it's hard or not because I haven't found one yet. But I'm certainly in the process and I'll keep you guys updated with what's going to happen in the future. Question, next question. If you had the ability, what would you change in university that would positively, po- positively benefit future students? Interesting question. Um, I think I personally wouldn't change much at all, especially in my university. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, the one thing that I really, really enjoyed about my university is the kind of studio culture that they pushed. Um, so maybe if you're in a university where they don't really have that studio culture and you find you working very independently, maybe that's something that other, university, other, other universities could change if that's what they're doing. But I think the studio culture within my university was absolutely fantastic and I think that is probably one of the most important things in studying like in a creative subject and having that collaborative working environment is super, super important. So I wouldn't actually change anything, but I'll just obviously just compliment the university and say they did a really good job in um, creating that kind of studio environment for us to um, work and really kind of express our, ourselves and our personality through our work. And the tutors really created a fantastic environment for us to be quite free and with our designs and our ideas. And I think that was really good. Next question, how would you stay productive and stick to a routine when not in uni and stuck at home? Um, if I was to sit here and tell you that my routine has been absolutely perfect, I'd be completely lying <laughs> because it hasn't been, um, for sure. Like I obviously found it difficult when I was at university, uh, when I was still in uni, well, still doing the uni work, but at home, um, I think for me, the one thing that kept me going was the end goal. And I've mentioned this before, the end goal is super, super important to keep me motivated. Um, and to keep you guys motivated. And I think you'll realise that if you really have that, me- that end goal in your forefront of your mind. Whether the end goal is to tick off that to-do list, cross all of those boxes. Whether that is to finish a drawing for the day. Whether that's to get through the week and you've got a certain amount of work that you want to do for the week. Whether that's finishing the year. Whether that's graduating, whether that's finding a job. Whether that's having your own firm in 10 years time. I think those goals are super, super important to keep you motivated. Um, and stay productive during really tough times that we've had with the pandemic, etc. So for me, I always, always have that end goal in mind. I've always got that on the forefront of my mind to keep me motivated. And when I stay motivated, I try really hard to stay in a routine because at the end of the day, I know that my routine is the best way for me to stay productive and get everything done that I want to do and still spend time with my family, friends. But I also think discipline is super, super important in that if you tell yourself that you're going to do something and you tell yourself you're going to get into some some kind of routine, stick to it, really stick to it. And if that routine doesn't work for you, then that's fine. But as long as you've really tried to stay into that routine, um, you just got to be really disciplined and dedicated to it. What made you want to start architecture-based video slash blogs? Um, interesting story. If you've been watching me from the beginning, you would know that I did not start with architecture at all. Um, I've obviously been... Um, a big fan of YouTube and YouTubers and I kind of um, I've always enjoyed photography and one day I just thought you know what I'm going to film and just see what happens I'm just going to film because like I mentioned earlier on trying things out to try and find what you love and enjoy is super important and photography I, I've always loved and then I just thought you know what I'm just going to do some filming because I've been watching some YouTubers and I'd like to film that clip because I think it'd be quite cool etc and then I ended up editing the video uploading it um, got some feedback And then I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and do some more videos. And at that moment in time, I was at school. The one thing I was absolutely really passionate about was fitness and I was committed to fitness. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to share my experiences in fitness, film what I'm doing, film my workouts, etc. And then obviously when I went to university, I began to film more and more uni stuff, as you guys would have seen if you've been here for the the whole time. And then it slowly kind of started evolving into... Um, architecture because I did notice that out there on YouTube there isn't necessarily anyone out there that is showing the kind of lifestyle side of architecture student and um, the kind of behind the scenes work that goes into fantastic drawings models etc and in my time at university I felt like no one was there to share their experiences because no one really wants to talk about 
the mental challenges of university and those kind of aspects of university and architecture. So I just felt, why not just share my architecture experience, show my architecture lifestyle, um, and kind of provide that content that I didn't really find for myself. Um, and that is just basically what's happened. And I think the important thing for me is that so many people see unbelievable drawings, so many people see unbelievable projects and renders and everything, but no one ever sees the face behind the work, the person, the personality behind the work, the time, the effort, the, the process behind the work. And I think that is what really motivates me to continue sharing those aspects of, um, of architecture and design and the creative industry and university and that it really kind of motivates me to continue putting content out there that people um, can really relate to and I want to create a home for people to relate and um, kind of create this community. Um, so that's what it kind of spiraled into but um, I didn't actually start making architecture videos, it was all about fitness back in day, like three years ago now, four years, no, no, yeah, three, I've been doing YouTube three years. Top five best places you've visited? <sighs> cool, blimey. Um, I'm not sure if I even have a top five, if I'm honest. Definitely up there is Valencia. Valencia is absolutely beautiful, unbelievable place. Um, when I went to Austria to watch the Grand Prix, that place is, was, was beautiful. I love kind of mountains and obviously being skiing. And I don't know, I haven't really, I don't think I really had the opportunity to travel and really experience um, the world. And that is definitely something I want to do. I definitely want to travel. And that probably leads me to a later question. I think one of the questions was, would you travel? If so, where? I would love to move to Australia and live there for like three months or so, three months, six months. I'd love to go to New Zealand. I'd love to travel around Europe. I'd love to go to Vietnam. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. Um, Japan would be cool. Um, but yeah, I'd love to travel. I'd really love to get myself out there. I've obviously, because architecture is such a long course, I kind of felt that it'd be stupid for me to travel before studying it as because it's so long, I just want to get out of the way. So when I finished school, I went straight into university. I didn't travel or anything because I just thought I'm just going to get architecture out of the way and then I can kind of enjoy my life a little bit more um, once I've got my fully, like my, all my qualifications. Um, so I haven't really had the opportunity to get out there and travel if I'm completely honest, but I'd love to. I'd really love to travel. Are you planning to start your own firm right after post-graduation or after gaining some more experience? So you guys would know, my own practice is definitely on my mind. Um, I'd love my own firm and I will have my own firm one day. But I think it's super important to spend as much time as possible really learning, exploring, discovering the possibilities of architecture and not um, kind of stopping myself from developing and learning. I really want to learn as much as possible. And I think gaining experience working in practice um, is so valuable, really, really valuable in setting up your own practice, building those connections, etc. Um, so I definitely want to spend a good few years working and gaining experience for sure before I even begin thinking about making my own practice. Obviously, I have this channel, I have my brand, and I'm slowly starting to build up kind of like this community and this brand, which might help me in creating my own practice when I'm older. But I really do want to gain a lot of experience before diving into my own space because I want. I want my studio to be good. Do you know what I mean? I want to. I want to really nail it when I do kick it off, and I think getting a lot of experience is super important to do that. How do you keep yourself fit despite the stress and schedule in architecture school? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. For me, I, when I started university, fitness was my was everything for me. It was my passion. It was everything. I just loved fitness. And so when I went to university, I told myself that no matter what, I'm going to stick to my training, I'm going to stick to my routine, I'm going to stick to my eating, I'm going to train five, six times a week. No matter how stressful I get, I'm going to keep to it because that's what I enjoy, that's what I love. So I, because I'm so passionate about fitness, I created time for it and I made sure that it was in my routine and in my lifestyle and it was super important to everything that I was doing. Um, so for me, it wasn't necessarily right, I need to keep fit, I need to keep fit. It was one of those things where I was super passionate about it that it wasn't even a question for me to go to the gym. It was just part of my routine and part of my lifestyle. Um, but if I was to give you advice, I'd I'd say 
of routine. <laughs> I don't know I just keep saying routine, but routine is super important for you to be able to have the time to go to the gym, have the time to train, have the time to do uni work, have the time to see your family. And I always say it and I always say it. And I will make a podcast one day talking about planning and scheduling and those kind of things. Um, because routine is obviously very subjective. Um, obviously everyone has their own routine and there isn't necessarily a perfect routine. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make a video for sure discussing how to kind of plan and schedule and that kind of thing. God, my shoulder is <laughs> trying to hold myself up here. Favourite playlist to work slash study to? So actually, the music that I play in my videos, the kind of trancey, housey, techy tunes, that is the music I listen to. Um, and that is why I find it super important for me to express my personality through my filming and editing by including the music I love and I really enjoy. Um, so the music that you hear on these videos are the music that I listen to. I love house, I love tech, I love trance, I love electro music. And then funnily enough, I absolutely love American rap as well. So it's kind of like a bit of a contrast between the two. It's obviously drastically different. Um, but yeah, I really do love American rapper. I just I just like lots of different types of music. I don't necessarily have a set type of music and I will listen to that music whilst I'm working and studying. Architecture and Girlfriends Part 2. <laughs> you know what? We're going to have to do it. We're going to have to do it, Adam. Obviously, you guys, if you haven't seen the podcast, I had my mate Adam on. I asked him a couple of questions about girlfriends. His girlfriend was sat in the back. Yo, yo Adam, if you're watching this, next time you come on the podcast, maybe we get her to answer a couple of questions as well. We bring the girlfriend into the podcast and see see what she thinks of the life of an architecture student <laughs> and see what it's actually like to have a boyfriend that studies architecture. I think that'll be interesting, bro. Let's get it sorted. <laughs> For you, what's the perfect routine? Excuse me. I'm trying to film. <laughs> For you, What's the perfect routine for architect students? Like I said, routines are very relative, very individual. I couldn't sit here and tell you what the best routine is because what works for me might not work for you. Um, and I just think the important thing for me to share is that routines are important and you just have to find your own routine and find your own way and methods of being productive and getting everything done on time and all those kind of things. I'm not going to sit here and tell you what the perfect routine is, what you should not should and shouldn't you do. I think at the end of the day, it's trial and error and also just committing yourself to a routine to really try something out. Um, like it's, all, it's all good in games when you say, right, today I'm going to do this, 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 this. And then the following day, you do nothing again. I think you have to really commit to a routine to see if it's going to work for you, see if it's going to be a productive thing for you and um, if you feel happy doing it and that kind of thing. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you what the perfect routine is because I think... You guys just have to try it out for yourself and it's obviously very individual and um, relative to the individual. How do you feel about your next, uh, your new chapter after university? Um, I'm not sure if I'm honest, I'm not sure how I feel. It's, it's obviously very, very strange. Like I mentioned in my life after university video, it's been difficult um, to go from such a really heavy course of constant graft for three years to literally nothing. It's been strange, it's been really, really weird and I've obviously had to adapt and I've obviously discussed like the mental challenges and all that kind of thing and it's okay to feel that way. Um, but I think I am really, really excited in finding my next phase in, in my career and my next phase in my learning and discovering about architecture and, and design and finding my next stage in my practice because it's exciting, like it's really exciting to spend so long in university to finally come out and get out there into the world it's it's obviously quite daunting to get out there but it's very very exciting and i'm super super excited to get out there but obviously it is very uncertain and graduating in 2020 is it's a, it's a, it's a difficult time to graduate especially as an architect student it's obviously very uncertain if companies are hiring um and when's the right time to apply are you going to get a job? Are you going to be able to find a, an apartment or even somewhere to live once you've found a job? Because it's difficult to go do viewings and there's so many questions and it's a very difficult time to to graduate. But I think it's also a very exciting time in that you can really um, kind of test um, 
your mental and you can really challenge yourself um, in these times and I think the most important thing is that though it's very difficult to find a job you have to adapt to these environments in that everything is very digital now you can't physically have a CV or a cover letter and pass it to someone um, you have to be quite creative in how you market yourself how you brand yourself on social media um, so if you are at home and you are struggling with time and you don't really know what to do with yourself I'd highly advise you guys to really brand yourself really market yourself be quite innovative in the way you, in the way you express your personality your skills on social media because at the end of the day I think it's becoming even more and more important to really get yourself out there on social media and that is something that I've really tried to do in the past few months in showing my work and showing my portfolio um, but it's certainly a difficult time but it's also an exciting time in that there's so many more possibilities arising and so many things are changing now um, and it's quite interesting and quite kind of challenging and I enjoy that kind of challenge and that change so um, yeah, it's obviously it's, it's a difficult time to graduate. Um, it's a difficult time to find a job, but I'm up for that challenge. You know what I mean? I'm I'm here. I'm I'm up for that challenge. I'm really really passionate about finding a job and finding a place. And I think you just have to really be confident in your ability to know that whatever happens, it'll be okay. Whatever place I fall into, it'll be fine. It'll be what it'll be what needs to happen. And um, I'm not really stressing about exactly where I'm going to be going because I know that wherever I end up, it will be the place for me and it'll be the right place for me. So I'm not really forcing anything, which I think is super important as well. I and mean, that is definitely something for you guys to keep in mind. And yeah, that is all the questions that I've chosen for this week. We're 23 minutes in, bloody hell. It feels like, it feels like I've been saying about five minutes. Um, so yeah, thank you people for watching the video as always. If you haven't yet subscribed, please. If you haven't yet. <laughs> oh my God, Bob, that's so bad. <laughs> uh, if you haven't yet subscribed please hit that subscribe button um, make sure you smash the thumbs up button that'd be much much appreciated as you can tell I've got a bit of a cold because I think I've got hay fever in and this is not an ideal place to sit if you've got hay fever so yeah thank you for watching the video guys I hope you enjoyed if you've got any more questions just please let me know down below or just get at me on my Instagram just cheeky little Tom Rose Studio and I'll see you next time peace